Yeah. All right. Okay, so let me uh, recall where we Recording were. Recording in time. progress. Uh, so we talked about triangular structures on Lie algebras, and the triangular structure is uh, uh, an element in wedge two of, uh, of G, which uh, uh, satisfies the uh, classical young baxter equation. And such a structure defines a Lie by algebra structure by taking the differential of this R, uh, the one cos cycle, which is actually a co-boundary, and um, the, we stopped at the proposition that if you have a Lie algebra and a triangular structure, uh, so this means that uh, classical young box equation holds, uh, which is non-degenerate, uh, which means it defines a non-degenerate bilinear form on G star, uh, then uh, the inverse, which is uh, eta, and which is a non-degenerate bilinear form on G, skew-symmetric, uh, is actually a two-core cycle uh, on G with values in the ground field, which means it satisfies this linear equation. It's a kind of two-core cycle that defines a one-dimensional central extension of G. And conversely, if eta is a non-degenerate two-cos cycle, then uh, R, which is eta inverse, is uh, uh, a non-degenerate triangular structure. And so this is very nice because the, um, this equation of two-cos cycle, unlike the classical young baxter equation, is linear. So it's much easier to understand. So let me give you a kind of geometrically flavored proof of this. So, uh, so if R is a non-degenerate triangular structure, uh, then we discussed that uh, if you spread this R by uh, left translations over the leak group, uh, then this gives rise uh, to a left invariant symplectic structure on the group. Uh, and the symplectic form is just the inverse of the Poisson bind vector, which is non-degenerate everywhere in this case. So X R inverted is X, acting on R inverse. Uh, but, uh, but if you have a, a, a left invariant two form, so what is a symplectic form? Symplectic form is a, a non-degenerate closed two form. Well, it's already non-degenerate, but closed as a condition. And uh, so what uh, if you have a left invariant two form on a Lie group, uh, then how to tell whether it is closed? Well, this is exactly the condition that the value of this form uh, uh, so this a eta is uh, actually in uh, wedge two of G dual. Uh, so the value of this form and the identity uh, should be a two cos cycle. So there is Cartan's formula uh, which says that the differential of uh, see if eta is a uh, uh, left invariant two form, then the differential of eta on three uh, vector fields, uh, left invariant vector fields A, B, C is given exactly by this form. And so, uh, so that means that this condition is really equivalent to it being closed and therefore being simplified. So it, actually this argument works both directions. Uh, and uh, so a Lie algebra with uh, uh, a non-degenerate two-cos cycle eta is called a quasi frobenius Lie algebra. So there is a special case of uh, frobenius Lie algebra. Uh, uh, where this eta of AB is some linear functional of the commutator AB. So when this cos cycle is a co-boundary, where f is um, any linear function on G star. So if you have um, a linear function on, on G, which uh, uh, such that the bilinear form f of the commutator a, b is non-degenerate, then you have a Frobenius Lie algebra, in particular quasi frobenius But um, there are more uh, examples. And uh, in particular, every even dimensional abelian Lie algebra is quasi frobenius but it is not frobenius because of course, anything like of the form F A bracket B is going to be zero. But even dimensional is quasi frobenius because you can simply take any non-degenerate skew symmetric form and it will work. And here is another example. It's an exercise. It's a more interesting example. Uh, 
uh, that uh, if G is a finite dimensional Lie algebra and V is a G module of the same dimension as G, and uh, gamma uh, is a bijective one cos cycle, so it's a one cos cycle which is an isomorphism of vector spaces, then if you form a semi direct product G with V star, it's, it's actually quasi Frobenian. Uh, and there are many examples like that. I will not explain how to construct them, but it's not very hard. So there are many quasi frobenius Lie algebras, but not all uh, Lie algebras have a quasi frobenius structure, even when they're even dimensional. For example, one can show, and it's an exercise, that a semi-simple Lie algebra cannot have a quasi frobenius structure if it is not zero. Uh, however, so in particular, uh, the Lie and in particular, a GLN and SLN don't have a quasi frobenius structure. However, if we take a, a maximal, uh, uh, so, uh, so actually, uh, I think I need one here. So, so this is a, a Lie algebra of uh, uh, block upper triangular matrices with upper uh, uh, block uh, being uh, uh, of size n minus one, and we can put anything there, and in this block here, also anything. Uh, and here we have uh, zero. If it's a Lie algebra, it should be zero here. Uh, this is a Lie algebra of dimension uh, n times n minus one, which is always even, and uh, one can show that it is quasi frobenian So there is a nice uh, uh, non degenerate. Uh, two cos cycle. Uh, so, uh, so now how to classify uh, triangular structures? Well, that's given by the following theorem of Drinfeld. So, uh, uh, triangular structure on uh, Lie algebra G are labeled by pairs uh, A eta, uh, where A in, in G uh, is quasi Frobenius Lie subalgebra, and eta from wedge two of A to the ground field, uh, which assumed to be characteristic zero here, is a non degenerate two plus cycle. Uh, actually, this works in any characteristic other than two. Uh, so, uh, namely, if eta is such two plus cycle, uh, then uh, we should form R, which is eta inverse which is an element in wedge two of A, uh, and uh, then we can embed it into wedge two of G by this transport construction that I explained last time. And this will be uh, a solution of classical young baxter equation, which defines a triangular structure on G. And uh, moreover, uh, this A uh, will be this uh, Lie algebra GR plus, which I defined last time, and also GR minus. Uh, so uh, this Lie algebra is called support of R. Uh, okay, so uh, any questions about this? So this theorem follows from what I explained before, that uh, we have a solution R, we take its support, its support is a quasi frobenius the algebra, and therefore the structure is obtained in this way. Any questions? Okay, so let me let me continue. So I will have to skip some proofs in order to get to quantum groups today. Uh, so, uh, well, so in particular, I mentioned that semi-simple Lie algebras, which are not zero, cannot carry a non-degenerate triangular structure. And uh, so that means that uh, if you want to get interesting example, which will involve semi-simple Lie algebras, uh, um, well, semi-simple Lie algebra can carry a triangular structure, but this structure will not be non-degenerate, and its support is going to be some subalgebra, which is not going to be semi-simple. So this is not very nice, and therefore we uh, want to uh, relax this definition so that uh, we get more interesting examples. And uh, here is a relaxation. Uh, so we say that. Uh, uh, We say that an element uh, R tilde in uh, G cross G, not necessarily skew symmetric, uh, uh, 
is a, a quasi-triangular structure. If, uh, well, it satisfies classical Young-Baxter equation as in the triangular case, but we do not require it to be skew-symmetric. We only require that it's uh, symmetrization. Skew-symmetric means that its symmetrization is zero. But we require that this symmetrization is not necessarily zero, but it is an invariant element of the symmetric square of G. And we call this element T. Uh, and uh, so, for example, so triangular structure is a special case of this when this T is zero. Uh, so, uh, well, a triangular structure was an example of a co-boundary structure. And in fact, the same is true for quasi-triangular structure. Well, a quasi-triangular structure, uh, so co-boundary structure is supposed to be skew-symmetric, but quasi-triangular structure is not, so, so we need to do something. And in fact, uh, the way uh, to obtain uh, co-boundary co structure from, from quasi-triangular is simply to subtract one half of this T. Well, this will make it skew-symmetric, uh, and it's easy to show that, well, this will cease to satisfy uh, the classical young baxter equation, but it will satisfy the modified classical young baxter equation. So this is modified classical young baxter equation, which says that the classical young baxter of R is one quarter of T12 commuted with T23. And one can show that if you take any invariant element it's easy to show that if you take any invariant element in S2 of G called T, and if you take commutator of T12 with T23, uh, then you will get an invariant element which is totally anti-symmetric. Uh, so it will be in wedge 3 G, G. And so that's exactly the definition of co-boundary structure. And conversely, if you have a co-boundary structure, but uh, so co-boundary structure means that you have a skew symmetric element uh, of uh, G tensor G. So this is in wedge two of G, such that classical Young-Baxter of this R is uh, uh, invariant in wedge three of G. But if this invariant is of special form, namely one quarter of T one two T two three, where T is a, a uh, and symmetric tensor, invariant symmetric tensor, then uh, we can again uh, modify this R uh, by subtracting or adding this uh, one half of that T. Uh, and uh, this uh, would be a, a quasi triangular structure. So actually, uh, every uh, uh, such R defines two uh, different quasi triangular structures. Uh, and so in particular, uh, if R is a, a quasi-triangular structure, so in particular, if R tilde is a quasi-triangular structure, then if you take the differential of this R tilde, which of course is the same as the differential of R, uh, uh, is it, it's a Lie algebra structure of G. So, so this is the commutator. So, so this means that delta of A is A tensor one plus one tensor A commuted with, with R or with R tilde. This is a Lie by algebra structure on G and the corresponding Poisson Lie group structure on capital G is given by the formula that we discussed before for triangular structure. So actually it also holds for quasi-triangular uh, pi of x equals to x r minus r x, or you can write x r tilde minus r tilde, because the invariant part of r tilde is going to cancel since it's left and right translations are the same. So, uh, so for example, so so let me uh, now. Uh, Pavel. Talk about there seems to be a yes. question in the room. Yes. Hi, Pavel. I want to ask you, so this T then makes the, the G into a, a quadratic Lie algebra. Is that right? Yes. 
Uh, well, if t is non, uh, so quadratic, if t is non-degenerate, then we can invert it and get an invariant inner product on g. And oh, then it will be a quadratic Lie algebra. But if t is degenerate, then no. I see. So, so you are not assuming t being non-degenerate? No, it's not necessary. Although in the uh, main example of semi-simple Lie algebra, it will be. I see. And, and then the, the little r can be considered as a some kind of braiding? On well, it's an infinitesimal version of braiding. Unfortunately, I won't be able to discuss quantum groups in much detail, but uh, when you quantize this R, yes, indeed, you get a braid. Okay, thank or you. Or quantum R matrix. Okay, other questions? Okay. So, uh, so for example, uh, if you have an abelian Lie algebra, uh, then, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, triangle, so any element of wedge 2 of G automatically satisfies the classical Young Baxter equation, um, and it gives rise to uh, uh, delta equals to zero. And similarly for quasi triangular, uh, so uh, so, so and, or any co boundary structure. Uh, so, so, so actually, uh, in fact, so every co-boundary structure is triangular because when you classical young box, then involves only commutator. So classical young box of anything is zero. And so, uh, in this, so this means that if you have a non-abelian Lie algebra and you take G dual. Uh, with uh, uh, which is abelian, uh, so so non-abelian Lie algebra with zero uh, uh, co bracket, and you take the dual Lie by algebra uh, G star, so it has zero bracket and non-trivial co bracket. Uh, this is never co boundary unless this co bracket is zero because G star is abelian. So this is an example of a Lie by algebra which isn't co boundary. Uh, for two-dimensional Lie by algebras, it's an exercise to see that uh, so that we uh, identify two kinds of them, B10 and B0 beta. And uh, so this is called, this is triangular, but this actually fails to be triangular and even fails to be co-boundary uh, for beta different from zero. So I will uh, skip the proof of that. And finally, an example, uh, the standard structure on SL2, which was our somehow main, main running example. So re recall that this has the form delta of E equals to one half of E wedge H, delta of F is one half F H, and delta of H equals zero. So this is not triangular, it turns out, uh, but it is quasi-triangular. Uh, uh, so uh, the quasi-triangular structure is uh, this R tilde, which is E tensor F plus one quarter H tensor H, uh, so you can check that that satisfies the classical Young-Baxter equation. It's an easy calculation. And if you take the symmetrization of this, you obtain E tensor F plus F tensor E plus one half H tensor H, which is uh, the Casimir tensor. Uh, so this is an invariant element of symmetric square of G, uh, such that uh, its inverse is the invariant inner product. So in this case, indeed, as was asked in the question, we have a quadratic Lie algebra. Uh, and uh, this omega, uh, uh, so it's actually, uh, I think I, sh I called it T. Let me just call it T. Okay, so, so this comes from invariant in our code. So any, any questions about this example? Uh. Looks like no questions. No questions? Okay. So now let me talk about the Dreamfield double construction for Lie by algebra. So it's actually a way uh, to, uh, so it shows that unlike triangular Lie by algebras, which are very special somehow and related to classical Lie theory more than to quantum groups, uh, uh, quasi triangular Lie by algebras are uh, somehow the most general case in some sense. You, which means that 
for any bi any Lie bi algebra it gives rise to a not necessarily it's not necessarily itself quasi triangular, but it gives rise to a quasi triangular Lie bi algebra which is twice as big, and that's called the Dreenfeld double. And um, so it can be obtained from a triangular Lebesgue. So let me explain that in more detail. Uh, so, uh, so, so for this notion, uh, for this need, for this uh, purpose, we need a notion of Mannion triple. So, what is a Mannion triple? So, a Mannion triple is a tr uh, triple uh, of finite dimensional Lie algebras. Uh, uh, G, G plus, G minus, where G uh, is equipped with a non-degenerate inner product, uh, which is invariant, so G is a quadratic Lie algebra. Uh, and G plus and G minus in G are uh, isotropic Lie subalgebras. Uh, so it means uh, this uh, inner product vanishes when you restrict it to G plus or when you restrict it to G minus. And uh, moreover, as a vector space, G is a direct sum of these two isotropic sums. So this means that the uh, dimensions of G plus and G minus are the same, and dimension of G is E. Uh, so, uh, so this is a very nice notion because it's a purely Lie theoretic notion. So there is no uh, strange uh, things like uh, solution of young box equation or uh, co bracket satisfying a co cycle condition. Uh, everything is very classical and theoretic, and yet it turns out to be in equivalent to the notion of a finite dimensional Lie bi algebra. Uh, so let's see that. So suppose uh, you have a Mannion triple, uh, G, G plus, G minus. Uh, well, then, uh, uh, first of all, these spaces G plus and G minus are naturally dual to each other because uh, the form is non degenerate. And we have this direct sum decomposition, and each of these spaces is isotropic. So in this case, if I restrict my form to G plus tensor G plus or to G minus tensor G minus, I get zero. But if I restrict it to G plus tensor G minus, uh, then I get uh, 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 then I get uh, a non-degenerate pair. And so this gives me an identification of G plus star with G minus. As vector spaces. And so I obtain a Lie bracket on G plus star, which uh, is transported from G minus, which dually means that I have a co bracket delta on G plus. So I have G plus is equipped both with bracket and co bracket. And the proposition uh, is that uh, it's a Lie bi algebra. So the uh, two co cycle condition, one co cycle condition holds. So that's what we need to check. Uh, I will uh, actually skip this proof. It's a, it's a computation, uh, so so this uh, it's in the notes. So I will make the notes available, uh, but it's just a direct calculation. Uh, and conversely, uh, if A uh, uh, equipped with commutator uh, and co-commutator bracket and co-bracket is a Lie bi algebra. Then we can construct a Mannion triple. And the way to do it is the following. We take G, and it is A. Uh, so we have uh, A is our Lie bi algebra. So we make G is A plus A dual. Uh, and so he, this has a natural inner product, uh, which is just the, the cross inner product between A and A dual. So A1, F1. A2, F2 is F2 of A1 plus F1 of A2. Um, and so, uh, so we already have a bracket on A, and we have a bracket on A star. And the only uh, thing that remains, and they are already isotropic, by the way, by definition. So uh, the only uh, uh, thing that remains is to define a bracket uh, between G plus and G, G minus. So we need uh, to define uh, the bracket between them uh, in such a way that uh, the form is invariant. And there turns out to be a unique way to do so. So, uh, so suppose A is in G plus and F is in G minus. And so what does invariance of the form require? requires that 
if I have any B in G plus. So, so this commutator of A with F, it has two components. It has a component in G plus and has a component in G minus. And so uh, it requires, uh, so we can check uh, invariance by taking inner product with B in G plus and some G in G minus. So inner product with B, A bracket F with B should be equal to F B A, that's an invariance condition. And so that means uh, that, well, this is the adjoint of A acting on B with a minus sign minus adjoint a dual, or I'm sorry, minus adjoint a b. And, and so that means that uh, uh, the bracket a f minus is the co-adjoint minus the co-adjoint action of a on f. And in a similar way, you can check that uh, the bracket of a f plus the uh, component of that that uh, lives in g plus is a joint of f star of a so altogether we get if we put the both of them together add them up we obtain this formula here which is a joint f dual of a minus a joint a dual of f and the next exercise is to check the jacobi identity for this bracket so this gives rise to a Manin triple. And so this shows that the notions of Lie by algebra, uh, finite dimensional Lie by algebra and finite dimensional Manin triple are equivalent. Okay, any questions about this? Oh, no, no questions. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, uh, let A uh, equals to G plus be uh, Lie by algebra, uh, and G, G plus, G minus be the corresponding Manian triple. So this is uh, my A, and this is my A dual. Uh, and what uh, I claim is in fact that this G is a Lie by algebra, not just a Lie algebra. Namely, the co bracket on it uh, is defined by this formula delta G equals to delta A minus delta A dual. So this means that the delta of a comma f, where this lies in a, and this lies in a dual, is delta of a minus delta of f. And this is the co-product of a, co-bracket of a, and this is the co-bracket of a dual. Um, so clearly this is a Lie co-algebra structure, uh, but we will see that uh, moreover, this is a one core cycle. Uh, and here the minus sign is going to be crucial. So of course, uh, any linear combination of them would be a co-algebra structure because we have a co-algebra structure on one and co-algebra structure on the other, but uh, only this linear combination up to scaling is uh, one that defines a one uh, core cycle. So this minus sign is important for you. So, in, and in fact, we will show more than that. We will show that, uh, that this delta is uh, uh, the differential of some R tilde, uh, which satisfies the classical Young-Baxter equation. And so in particular, this, uh, this will be a quasi-triangular uh, Lipayage. And moreover, this element R tilde is very simple. This is actually the canonical element in the tensor product of G plus and G minus. So we discussed that G plus and G minus are canonically dual to each other. And so the tensor product of them has a canonical element, which is on the basis EI of uh, A, which is uh, G plus, uh, and dual basis of uh, A star, which is uh, G minus. Uh, has the form the sum of over i of e i tensor e i star, uh, and so if you take that element, then we claim that this is the quasi triangular structure and its differential is delta uh, delta g. So the proposition is that uh, uh, delta is 
which is as above is the differential of this R. Uh, so let me just quickly uh, discuss that. So uh, let's compute this differential. So differential of R tilde of A. So what does it mean? This means that I have to commute A with this R. And so I have to commute it with the first component and commute it with the second component. But now, uh, well, commuting with the first component is what it is. But for the second component, we have uh, it's a commutator, cross commutator between something in G plus and something in G minus. And we know that it has two parts. We know that it has the form adjoint star of EI star of A minus adjoint A star of EI star. But then it, uh, if you look at, the, at this term, that's actually exactly the same as uh, the second sum in here. Uh, and so they cancel each other because we have a minus sign. So it is, uh, they are the same because, uh, uh, because the tensor sum of EI tensor EI star is uh, invariant under the action of G plus. It's a canonical element in the tensor product of G plus with G plus dual. And therefore they cancel and we are just left with this element. Uh, and this element is an A uh, tensor A. Uh, and uh, we can check that that's exactly uh, delta of A. Because if you take the inner product of this element with F tensor G, where F and G are in the dual, then, uh, okay, how do you do this? You have to compute F of the I times G inner product with this. Uh, but uh, but when we say, uh, we, when we have anywhere F in our product EI times tensor with the element of the dual basis, this is the same as just replacing this thing with F. So we get the sum, actually there is no sum anymore. G in our product with a joint F star of A, which is the same as commutator FG with A by the invariance of the form. And that's the same as F tensor G with delta of A, because delta uh, is, a du is dual to the commutator on G plus star. So this uh, all proves that, uh, all of this argument proves that delta of uh, A is equal to dr tilde of A. And in a similar way, you can show that uh, if you have an element in A dual, uh, which is G minus, G plus dual, uh, then uh, dr tilde of f is actually minus delta a star of f. And uh, you will get that minus sign. And that's uh, because uh, that's why this minus sign is important. And so uh, here is a proposition that uh, if I take this r tilde and I symmetrize it, uh, I get this uh, invariant element omega, uh, uh, g invariant element, which is inverse to the inner product. And also, uh, R tilde satisfies the classical young box equation. So this shows that R tilde is a quasi-triangular structure on G. So the Lie by algebra G equipped with delta G is actually quasi-triangular with quasi-triangular structure defined by this R tilde. And so the proof is very easy. For the first statement, you just uh, write it down, and you get the sum of EI tensor EI star plus EI star tensor EI. And this is exactly the inverse to the invariant in our product. And uh, I will uh, leave the second one as an exercise. So to check that it satisfies the classical young box equation, it's also a like, two-line calculation, uh, uh, which is directly from the definition. And the uh, definition is that uh, this uh, uh, G uh, equipped with uh, R tilde, is called the Drinfeld double of the Lie by algebra A, and it is denoted uh, by uh, uh, DA. And so uh, we, we see that uh, this uh, G, uh, the Drinfeld double, uh, contains.
Okay, so it. Uh, uh, so this G A contains uh, A as a lead sub by algebra and also A dual, but with the opposite commutator. Uh, so this means that any finite dimensional Lie by algebra can be embedded canonically in a quasi-triangular one with an explicit R matrix. Okay, any questions up to this point? No. Okay. Hmm? Okay. So now uh, let me explain that in fact, uh, the Drinfield double uh, is in some sense a, a universal construction uh, for uh, quasi triangular uh, uh, Lie by algebras. Uh, and so this is expressed by the following proposition. So, uh, so let's uh, let G uh, comma R be a quasi triangular uh, Lie by algebra. Uh, uh, well, I called this R, R tilde before, but let me call it R because there will also be an R tilde. So uh, suppose that this is a quasi triangular Lie by algebra. So that means R is not necessarily skew symmetric, but its skew symmetrization is invariant, and R satisfies the classical Young Baxter equation. And as before, in the triangular case, we can still define this G plus R, which is the span of uh, elements identity tensor F of R, where F is in G star, and G minus R, which is F the span of F tensor identity R, where F is in G star. So like I explained, this R gives rise to two linear maps from G, G, to, uh, from G star to G, uh, so, and these are the images of these maps. So these are images of two maps. Let me call them R plus minus from G star to G uh, defined by R. Uh, and uh, these are lists of algebras of uh, G. So we showed that in the triangular case, and the same proof works in the uh, quasi triangular. And let's uh, take G bar, uh, which is uh, by definition the Drinfeld double of G plus R. So this is the Drinfeld double of this, the uh, uh, algebra spanned by the left component of R. Uh, and uh, well, uh, of course, uh, we discussed also that th these are naturally dual to each other uh, as vector spaces. So, so in fact, uh, uh, we will have the corresponding Manion triple, G bar, G plus R, G minus R. Uh, then there exists a unique homomorphism so this is part of the statement that uh, the, there is a Manion triple where the first half is G plus R and the second half is G minus R. And moreover, there is a unique homomorphism Phi from this uh, during the double G plus to G, uh, which uh, when restricted to G plus R and G minus R is just the identity. Uh, and uh, and also when you, uh, which maps uh, the canonical uh, uh, quasi-triangular structure on G bar into R. So if R tilde is the sum over I, E I tensor E I dual uh, is the quasi-triangular structure on this uh, Drinfeld double, uh, then uh, pi of this R tilde equals R. And in particular, uh, if you take the image of this pi, which, which is the sum of G plus R and G minus R, which is in this case, not necessarily direct because they might intersect inside G, although they don't inside G bar. Uh, is, uh, so this is a least subalgebra. So not only each of them individually is a least subalgebra, but also the sum of them is a least subalgebra. And in fact, it's a least sub by algebra. 
And, uh, and so this uh, GR, this least subalgebra, is in fact a quotient of this double as a quasi-triangular Lie bialgebra. So this GR is a Lie bialgebra with, Lie, with uh, a quasi-triangular structure R, and uh, it's a quotient of uh, G plus R uh, as a quasi-triangular Lie bialgebra. So this shows that, uh, well, uh, it, so any uh, so you can again take the support of the R matrix. So you can say that this is the support of R. And uh, uh, the support of the R matrix in any quasi-triangular Lie algebra is a quotient of the Drinkfield double of the Lie algebra spanned by uh, the uh, left component of this uh, uh, R matrix. So uh, let me uh, uh, explain uh, the proof. So uh, we already showed that uh, uh, these G plus R and G minus R are Lie algebras. They are canonically dual to each other. Uh, and uh, this shows that this map pi is naturally defined. And uh, it's easy also to see that it maps this canonical uh, quasi-triangular structure into R. And uh, what remains to show that it's a homomorphism of Lie algebras. Uh, and, and that's an exercise again, it's a direct calculation. So I did a few of those calculations. These calculations are all uh, kind of of the same flavor. So I'm going to skip some of them now. Uh, any questions? No. All right. So let me give some examples now. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so if you have a non-degenerate triangular structure, GR, then this G plus R and G minus R is just G. So G, D of G plus is just G plus G with uh, the usual commutator and the co-bracket delta one minus delta two. And uh, the commutator uh, is uh, between the two components of G is uh, given by this formula. And then uh, you have map, map pi, which is uh, pi of x1, x2 is x1 minus x2. So, so this is uh, uh, an example of how uh, triangular non-degenerate structures are obtained from the double. A more interesting example uh, is uh, standard structure. So for standard structure on SL2, the R matrix is E tensor F plus one quarter of H tensor H. So you can look at the G plus uh, R, uh, which is spanned by the left component and G minus R, which is spanned by the right component. And uh, uh, G plus R is spanned by E and H and G minus R spanned by F and H as seen explicitly from this formula. So this means that the double of G plus uh, is, uh, well, if you like, it's, uh, uh, maybe I should write uh, E and F, it will be more clear. So there is a CE plus CF, uh, but, uh, but H's are different. So there is H1 and H2. And uh, e uh, and this R tilde uh, uh, is uh, uh, E tensor F uh, plus one quarter of H one tensor H two, uh, and then uh, pi of E is E, pi of F is F. And pi of h1 and pi of h2 is h. Okay, so let me now explain. Uh, so, so this uh, standard, so using the quantum, uh, using the Drinfeld double construction, we can extend uh, the uh, standard Lie by algebra structure from SL2 to any simple Lie algebra. So let me uh, recall how that works. Uh, so we have. Uh, uh, G, which is a finite dimensional simple Lie algebra over complex numbers. Uh, and so uh, 
we will recall some basic definitions and notation attached to that. So we have Cartan subalgebra, we have root system. Uh, it's a it has positive and negative roots. Uh, so we have a polarization. We have Cartan matrix. Uh, we have uh, simple roots. Uh, we have root subspaces, uh, which uh, uh, are eigenspaces of the Cartan uh, corresponding to roots. And they are one dimensional. We have the root decomposition and uh, N plus. Uh, uh, is a uh, sum of root subspaces corresponding to positive roots and n minus to negative roots. The mutator of two root subspaces is contained in a root subspace G alpha plus beta if alpha plus beta is a root and is zero if alpha plus beta is not a root unless beta is minus alpha when you land in the Cartan. Then you have a non degenerate invariant form on H, uh, non degenerate form, let's say form H star, uh, which is dual to the form on H. And we normalize it in such a way that alpha alpha is two for long roots. And then we have these numbers di, uh, which are two divided by alpha i, alpha i. And so, the root spaces are orthogonal if alpha plus beta is not zero. And so uh, now uh, to get uh, this uh, Lie algebra structure, I'm going to consider Lie algebra G tilde, uh, which is, so, uh, so we need to be even dimensional. And so, well, N plus and N minus are kind of dual to each other, but Cartan is alone. And so in order to get a double of something, what we need is we don't need to double up the Cartan. So this G tilde is going to have two cartons, H1 and H2. So it's a direct sum like that. Uh, and uh, they will commute. Hi, Pavel. And, uh, I think yes. there's a question in the chat. Yes. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can read it. Do we know a classification? of a uh, skew symmetric degenerate solution of classical young box equation for simple Lie algebras. Uh, well, uh, not, not really because uh, uh, this is more or less equivalent to classifying uh, quasi frabenius Lie uh, algebras since uh, any quasi frabenius Lie algebra, any Lie, so by a dot theorem, any Lie algebra finite dimensional is a Lie subalgebra of GLN or SLN. And so uh, we can always embed any quasi frabenius Lie algebra into SLN and, so, and obtain su in such a way this structure. Uh, so, uh, so therefore, and, and it, one can show that, uh, it, for example, if you have any uh, uh, so, so any Lie algebra with a derivation uh, that has, uh, let's say, the non-degenerate derivation gives rise to such a thing. Uh, so, so, so there, this is more or less equivalent to classifying all Lie algebras, and so that that, that we cannot do. But uh, but there are some nice uh, solutions. So, so what you can do is you can so you cannot construct you cannot classify triangular structures on simple Lie algebra, but you can classify quasi triangular ones, and that was done by Bilavin and Drinfeld. And that's a very interesting and nice theory uh, of Bilavin and Drinfeld triples, uh, which I have no time to discuss, but it's discussed in my book with Schickman and further down from the place where uh, I will stop uh, and. Uh, one can study, for example, solutions of uh, triangular structures, which are limits of quasi-triangular structures. And that was done by Gersten Faber and G.R. Quinto. Uh, so, so this is actually a, something that you can do. It's a, also it's a nice theory. Okay, so let me continue then. Uh, so these Cartan's commute and uh, uh, HI with E alpha is uh, alpha of IH times E alpha H, I with a alpha is minus alpha of H, 
times F alpha. And uh, so A E alpha is a positive root elements and F alpha is negative root elements and the commutator is H alpha. And so the commutator of E alpha and F alpha is going to be the average of the two cartons, one half of H alpha one plus H alpha two. So this simply means that this G tilde is a direct sum of G and, and Cartan as Lie algebras. And uh, H1, uh, so there, there, there is a direct sum of two Cartans sitting inside, and H1 is uh, H comma H, and H2 is H comma minus. Um, and so then uh, this G tilde B plus B minus, where in B plus we take Cartan H1, and B minus we can take Cartan H2, is a Mannion triple uh, and uh, has invariant inner product, which is in this presentation, uh, inner product of G minus uh, inner product of H. And so we have a quasi triangular structure, uh, R tilde, uh, which is one half uh, of X I one tensor X I two sum over I. Uh, plus uh, the sum of positive roots uh, E alpha tensor F alpha. So that's uh, uh, R tilde. This is the canonical element in the tensor product of B plus and B minus. Um, and uh, Xi is a normal, normal basis of H. Uh, so uh, when we take a, a quotient, uh, by H, so there we have this central uh, subalgebra H here. Um, and uh, if we take a quotient by that, then this X1 and X2 become the same, and we just get G with quasi triangular structure R, which is one half of the sum of Xi tends to Xi plus the sum of uh, over alpha of E alpha tensor F alpha. And uh, an exercise is to show that uh, if you compute the co-bracket of simple root generators, delta EI, you get DI over two, where DI are those integers that I define EI tensor HI and uh, wedge HI and delta of FI is DI over two FI wedge HI and, and delta of HI is zero. So these are, this is the uh, quasi-triangular structure, uh, which gives the uh, semi-classical uh, limit for quantum group UQ of G. Uh, so uh, let me stop for questions now. Questions. So uh, I, I do not remember where did, when did I start? What time did I start? And when should, should I stop? I think. Five more minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So let me try to uh, talk, say a few words about quantum group. So, uh, so quantization of Lie by algebra. So, uh, suppose G is a Lie algebra. Then uh, we have enveloping algebra U of G. Uh, and this enveloping algebra is a Lie by algebra. It is is a by is not a Lie by algebra. It's a by algebra, associative by algebra. Associated, uh, which means that we have the co-product for co multiplication uh, delta uh, from u of g to u of g tensor u of g, uh, and uh, it has two properties. It is co-associative, so delta tensor identity delta is identity tensor delta delta. So this just means that if you take the dual, this will be an associative product on the dual space u of g star. So, uh, and another uh, property, it's a homomorphism of algebra. And uh, being a bialgebra also means that it has a co-unit, which is just the augmentation homomorphism, uh, which it defines the trivial G module, but uh, this is not going to be important to what I say. And uh, this co-product is defined, uh, well, since it's a homomorphism, it's enough to define it on generators. And on generators uh, X in G, uh, it's defined by the formula 
delta x equals x tensor one plus one tensor x. So this uh, means that x is a primitive element. Actually, this is more than a bi-algebra. It's a Hopf algebra, which means it has the antipode. But again, this is not going to be important the way it is. Now, uh, definition of Greenfield is the following. So uh, a quantized enveloping algebra. So, uh, so what is quantization? Quantization means that when we have a commutative product in classical mechanics, we deform it, and it becomes non-commutative in quantum mechanics. And so the product, so I said that this delta defines an associative product on u of g star, but it's actually commutative because, because actually uh, this delta is symmetric. It maps to symmetric squared of u of g. So the dual product on u of g star will be commutative, and we want to deform it non-commutative. So that definition is the following. A quantized universal enveloping algebra uh, is a flat uh, deformation, uh, 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 class of bi-algebras, associative bi-algebras over formal power series in one variable. So what does it mean in concrete terms? Uh, we can Flat means that we can identify it as a vector space, as, as a module of a formal power series with ug of h. But the operations are deformed. So for example, multiplication uh, for a and b uh, in u of g, let's say, uh, is deformed. This is given by some mu zero of a b plus h times mu one of a b plus h squared mu two of a b, where all of these uh, mu i uh, uh, map uh, u of g to u of g tends to u of g. And similarly, the coproduct is deformed. Delta of a is delta zero of a plus h delta one of a plus h squared delta two of a. So the initial term, this first term is just the usual product and the usual product, but the higher terms are some quantum corrections. Uh, so, uh, so delta i are uh, mapped from u of g. I'm sorry, here, here it's a uh, uh, product into u of g. And here it's the other way, u of g to u of g tensor plus u of g. Uh, and so uh, we need to deform it in such a way that axioms of a bi-algebra are preserved, which means that delta is co-associative and is an algebra homomorphism. And uh, consider uh, the... Uh, uh, so uh, in, in particular, what one can do is one can extract the first term. So, so this delta zero is commutative, uh, but uh, so delta zero uh, is co-commutative. It lands in symmetric square of U of G, but delta one already doesn't have to be, because this quantum deformation doesn't have to be commutative. And so uh, uh, if I take the difference delta A minus delta opposite of A, which means opposite means that I switch the components, then delta zero is going to cancel. And this, so this is going to be divisible by h bar. So we can divide by h bar and take the limit, which means evaluate that h bar equals zero. And that actually is skew symmetric. So it's a map uh, uh, from u of g to uh, wedge two of u of g. And uh, what Drinfeld showed, and it's not very hard to, to show that, in fact, if you restrict it, to the Lie algebra itself as a subspace here, this is going to land in wedge two of G instead of wedge two of U of G. And moreover, this resulting map from G to wedge two of G is a Lie bi algebra structure. So G uh, delta uh, is called, so this Lie bi algebra G delta is called the quasi classical limit of the quantum developing algebra U of G uh of g which is what we had there and this uh of g is called quantization a quantization of u of g so for example uh, uh this is the quantum group u, u of sl2 uh and uh, uh you see the co-multiplication became non-commutative and uh this uh of sl2 is uh, 
quantization of the standard Libra algebra structure for SO2. And so here is a theorem with which I want to finish. This is a theorem with Kashdan that we proved in 1995, which was conjectured by Drinfeld. And it says that in characteristic zero, every Libra algebra ad admits a quantization. And moreover, this can be done by means of a quantization functor, which actually uh, attaches to a Libra algebra, not just over K, but over formal power series in H, which means the deformation of Libra algebra. It attaches to it a quantum enveloping algebra, a quantum group, uh, such that the quasi-classical limit of quantization of G with co-bracket delta is delta zero plus H delta one plus so on, is G delta zero. So classical limit recovers only the zeros term. And moreover, uh, this functor is an equivalence of category. And so, uh, and an example is that quantization of SL2 with the delta standard structure. So if you apply this functor, you also get actually this UH of SL2 to improve. So I want to stop here. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Pavel, for the, for the lectures. So I've been told by the organizers that um, we're on a very tight schedule and we don't have time for questions, unfortunately. No, no, no I, have, I have some time. I have some time for questions. Well, it's... Um, it's the kitchen staff that are imposing this. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but I think uh, if anyone wants to ask questions, they could say, but yeah, we need to uh, yeah, close the session. But uh, let's, let's thank Pavel again for his lecture. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>